Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to MedZone African Motives. Uh, we are still on our mathematics grade 10 revisions, working on trigonometry. Uh, this is uh, one of the exams that is important for us to work on, to revise along so that we understand how do they ask uh, these questions. It's very, very important in your uh, simplification and uh, calculations. So given question number four, 4.1, uh, in the diagram, triangle ABC is a right angled at B. All right, so we're given a right angled triangle, which is right angled at B, meaning to say at B, we've got a 90 degrees. Remember, the right angle represents uh, 90 degrees. So complete the following statements. So we have got the statements that we are given. In this case, complete the following statements, uh, 4.11. The sine of C is equal to AB over what? The sine of angle C. All right, uh, remember that I told you guys, if you are dealing with trigonometry, the angle that you are given, like here we are working with C. All right, we are working with C. According to angle C, that's how you name the sides. You name the sides according to the angle of C. All right, so you know that according to the angle of C, this side is going to be the opposite, all right? So we're gonna have the opposite side, uh, the 90 degrees and C, they are adjacent to each other. So we've got the adjacent and we also have the hypotenuse in that case. And since this is a ratio of a sine of C, we have our mnemonics for the ratios, which is from our Soka Toa, uh, remember, from our Soka Toa concept. We understand that the sine of C is supposed to be taken from the ratio of sine, whereby the sine of theta representing C as our angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Remember your formula, opposite over the hypotenuse. So in actual sense, it means the sine of C was supposed to be equal to the opposite, according to C, our opposite, which is AB. And this is the AB that we are given here. So this is AB over the hypotenuse so this side that is missing that is not shown there is the hypotenuse so our hypotenuse is this side which is the side of what the side of ac so this is ab over ac so this was supposed to be ac okay that is uh, how this question was supposed to be tackled you take it according to the ratio and also uh, the angle that you're working, we are working with the angle C, so you work uh, with angle C. All right, but on this 4.12, it's no longer angle C, it's now angle A. So according to angle A, this is what we have according, this is our angle A. According to angle A, this is now the opposite side, All right? So we are now having the opposite side. And this AB is our adjacent, so there we have got the adjacent and the hypotenuse does not change. So which ratio gives us AB? What is AB? That is according to the angle of A. What is AB? According to angle A, AB is this side. AB represents the adjacent, okay? Over BC, BC represents the opposite, all right? BC represents the opposite. So which ratio gives us the opposite, uh, the adjacent over the opposite, that is the question, adjacent over the opposite. Where there's adjacent and opposite, there's a tan. But it's not adjacent over because this tan, it represents the tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. But there they gave us adjacent over opposite. So which ratio is that one? It is the ratio for cot. Remember the reciprocal adjacent over op is the reciprocal of this. We just have to interchange. For us to have adjacent over opposite is the reciprocal of opposite over adjacent. And what is the reciprocal of tan? The reciprocal of tan, one over tan, is the one that gave us this. And we know that one over tan, it's a what? It's a cot. So instead, this is supposed to be the cot of A. Cot A is equal to adjacent over opposite, which is AB over the opposite, which is BC. All right, so that is how this question was supposed to be uh, done. Okay, uh, that was just one mark on mark, which is fine. All right, so let us check this part here. 
uh, on question 4.2 without using a calculator. So there we are not uh, required to use a calculator, determine the value of this. All right, so let us just have our question aside. So we are not supposed to use our uh, calculator, that's 4.2. We are asked to determine the value of sine of 60 degrees times uh, tan 30 degrees. Uh, this is everything over the sec of 45 degrees. All right, so actually what they want you to do is to apply your special angles. Remember from your special angles, we've got uh, uh, this revision, guys. I hope now we understand this. This is 45. Uh, this is 45 degrees. I've got one, one, uh, the square root of two. Then we've got uh, the angles of 60 and 30 whereby this is a 60 degrees, uh, this is 30 degrees, this is one, this is two, this is the square root of three. All right, so the sine of 60, again, going back to our ratios, Sokatoa, remember our Sokatoa concept. So it means here, we are going to have the sine of 60 degrees, right? Remember, you asked not to use a calculator, so back here. But I, I told you guys whether they're saying use it without or using a calculator is just the same because the calculators, they simplify the same way that you're going to have them. All right, so what is the sine of 60? Sine 60 opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite according to 60 degrees, this is the opposite side and this is the hypotenuse. So that's the square root of three over two. Opposite square root of three over two times the tan of 30. This is our 30 here, the tan of 30 and tan is opposite of adjacent according to 30. This is the opposite according to 30 and this is the adjacent. So it's supposed to be one over the square root of three, all right? Opposite over adjacent. So you can write it as one over square root of three or you can write it uh, in its simplest form as uh, the square root of three, you're gonna multiply this square root of three over square root of three, which is one times square root of three which is going to be the square root of three over the square root of three times square root of three. Remember, it gives us three. So you can write it in simplest form like that, or you can just write it as one over square root of three. All right, this is over the sec of 45. Remember the sec is taken to be the reciprocal of cos. Sec was taken from one over cos. So if it is taken from one over cos, and the ratio of cos we know that is adjacent over the hypotenuse adjacent of hypotenuse, that is cos. So sec is the reciprocal, it's gonna be hypotenuse over adjacent, which is the opposite. So that will be hypotenuse over the adjacent. But using what? The triangle, whether it's 45 degrees, we are back to the 45 degrees, whether we are using this angle, remember I told you, you can use this or that is the same. So according to this 45, this is our opposite uh, side, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. So if we use this hypotenuse, that will be square root of the two, right? Over the adjacent, our adjacent is one. So it's square root of two over one, of which square root of two over one is the same as square root of two. Remember any number, if you divide it by one, it just remains as it is. So it's the square root of two, All right? So if you see on the numerator, there is actually a magic that is happening, the miracle that is happening. This square root of two, square root of three and square root of three can cancel because one is in the numerator. The other one is in the denominator, so you can cancel. This will be one, this will be one. So you're left with one times one. The numerator multiplies the numerator. So that's one over two times one, which is a two. So you've got one over two uh, divided to the square root of two. So you've got a square root of two like this. Uh, in actual sense, this simply means we are just, we are just multiplying together these two, all right? Uh, remember the concept here is uh, we've got one over two, divided like this to the square root of two, which is same as square root of two over one. So this will be one over two times to remove a division, you introduce a multiplication and you tip the second fraction. So it will be one over the square root of two. So that will be one times one, which is one over two times the square root of two, which is two square root of two. So that was saying, if you are given A over B divided by C like this, it is simply equal to A over B, C. These two, they just multiply each other, all right? Uh, easy peasy, all right? So that is the idea there. So meaning to say, if you simplify this whole thing that we see here, it gives us one over two square root of two, one over two square root of two. But this is not in simplest form. This is not required. 
So how do we wake up? How do we wake it up? Remember, we have to rationalize the denominator to have a rational term always. The denominator is supposed to remain with a rational term, a rational number. So what are we going to do? Multiply by two square root of two, which is the denominator, both the numerator and the denominator. So that is it. So you're gonna multiply this uh, so that this will give us uh, one times any number, it remains as it is. So one times two square root of two, it remains as two square root of two over uh, two times two, that's a four. Uh, the square root of two times the square root of two, that's a two. Remember the square root of a, times the square root of a is equal to a if the numbers are the same. Okay, or just multiply the square root of two times the square root, just multiply if you're not sure about it, multiply two times two, that's a four. So it's gonna be square root of four and square root of four is two, which is simply this number that you are, okay, they have it under the square root. So that will be a two. So it's gonna be four times two. Okay, so the two here and the two here can cancel. That's gonna remain with a one on top. So this will be a square root of two over four. Okay, so uh, that is how we could have simplified this part, but I always say under exam condition, guys, let's be honest with each other. Uh, once you are at this stage, you can just use a calculator here, okay? You can just use a calculator to simplify, get your answer, okay? Uh, which is okay, which is fine. So that is how we play around these questions, no triangles, your special angles, how to simplify from the ratios, uh, so Katoa uh, concept, apply your ratios properly, then simplify as far as possible using the laws of sets. You have to go back to the sets, your irrational numbers. All right, then we are given uh, on question number 4.3. In the diagram, uh, we have got the point P on this diagram, which is negative 5, 12, is a point in the Cartesian plane, ROP is theta. ROP, which is this angle, is theta. Determine the value of cos theta. All right, remember guys, I told you that once you're given this type of a question, it's not uh, a question for you to worry. They give you the theta uh, that is in the second quadrant or third quadrant or fourth quadrant, wherever it is. What you just need to do is to complete the triangle which falls in that quadrant, like here, it's in the second quadrant. Just complete the triangle like this. I'm gonna complete here. So it's gonna give us a right angle triangle. As you can see here, we're gonna have a right angle triangle. So working on this triangle, you are going to see that here we are given the point P where we are given the X value and the Y value. So remember, this is the X axis, the Y axis. So we are given the X value along this side. This is the X at what? At negative five. So this is at negative five. This is at positive 12 corresponding to this side. So it can be like this, minus five, the whole of this line, that is the X, all right? 12 is for the y, meaning to say the wall of this line, the y-axis on the y-axis which above, which is a positive 12. So this is it. So here it's minus five, here it's positive 12. We determine the side that is remaining and this is the hypotenuse that we call r in that case, okay? So r squared, remember r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So meaning to say r squared is equal to the x value, which is minus five uh, squared plus uh, the y value squared, which is 12 squared. So that is going to be r squared is equal to minus five squared. That is uh, 25 minus five times minus five. This is 25 uh, plus 12 squared, which is 144. So we're gonna have r squared at this, that will be 169. So to remove the square, we're gonna introduce the square root both sides. So r is going to be uh, plus or minus 18, but this side can never, be a negative is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse can never be a negative. So R is equal to 13. We have got our hypotenuse in that case. All right. So what I said, guys, is that after determining this, whatever question that you are being asked here to determine whatever values that you're given here, what you do is that, yes, you can see that this is your theta. Take, take a closer look on your theta. This is your theta. This angle is taken up to this point here. This angle is not inside of the triangle, no. It's outside of the triangle. But what it does is that it gives us the properties, uh, the properties of that same answer that you're supposed to have, even if it was presented here. So what you do is that you use the angle that is inside of the triangle, this one. 
this is the angle that you use inside of the triangle, this angle. It gives you the same properties, the same answer as this theta that you see here. So don't worry about that. They just say, my theta is outside. Too. So how is it possible? No, you use this theta that is inside of the diagram, this one inside of the triangle, the one that gives us a straight line here. All right, the one that is in, in with theta, this one, the one that goes with theta, but you use it inside of the triangle. So according to this triangle, according to this theta, I mean, this side is the opposite. 12 is your opposite, all right? Minus five is the adjacent. R is the hypotenuse. So the, you feel according to this angle. So we can now answer the question because we know our Soka Toa concept. Remember our Soka Toa concept. Once you understand this, guys, you can answer any question, any, any question. All right, so let's answer this one, 4.31, cos theta. So cos theta, the ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that means the cosine of theta is equal to, like I said, they gave you theta, but yes, you are talking about that. You are using the angle inside. So according to this angle, what is our adjacent? Adjacent is negative five. All right, so that is going to be negative five over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 18, just like that, you're done. We get the answer exactly, the answer for cos theta, but you are using the angle inside of the triangle. That part is how you attempt this one, all right? Then the other one is cosec squared theta plus one, all right? So that's cosec squared theta plus one. Let us just try to attempt it here, uh, 4.32 cosec, squared theta plus one. All right, so for cosec squared, cosec, remember cosec, it's a reciprocal that we take from one over sine. Cosec is one over sine. So this is same as one over sine theta, all right? So if it is one over sine theta, it means we are talking about the reciprocal of sine theta. Remember sine theta is opposite. The sine theta is opposite over the hypotenuse then cosec, it's one over sine theta, that is cosec. So if it is one over, it's the reciprocal of this. So it's gonna be hypotenuse over what? Hypotenuse over opposite. So we are going to take it as hypotenuse over opposite for cosec, which is one over sine, that is cosec. So what is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is 13. So this is going to be 13 over opposite. Remember we said the reciprocal of sine, so it's a hypotenuse over opposite. The opposite according to this is 12. So that's 12, but this is cosec squared. So we have to square this, all right, plus one. Once you have this guys, it's enough for you to have the answer on your calculator, just determine uh, your final answer direct. All right, so this is it. Uh, let us save our calculator here. All right, so that's um, open a bracket. 18 over 12, so you're gonna have 13 over 12 squared, all right, plus one, this is it. So this is 313 over 144, all right, so you've got 313 over 144, all right. So that is how you were supposed to attempt this typical question. Uh, so like I say, trigonometry uh, is something that is important for us very, very important. So we shall be together in revision of question papers. We just want to make sure that we have got clarity as we revise towards the exams which are ahead of time. So make sure that you tune in back to MedZone African Motives where you have your introduction to the topics and also the question papers uh, that are part of your syllabus so that you prepare yourself, fully prepare yourself for the exams which are ahead of time.